Hi, I'm Jan Guarino and welcome to Fearless Watercolors. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be doing a landscape um, and a little architecture of the Bow Bridge, a very famous bridge in Central Park. What I really wanted to have happen here was to be able to suggest the architectural effect without going into too much detail. The demo will be sped up so you'll be able to follow along. I'll be pointing out specific things that I'm doing so that you can, you know, check that out as I'm doing it. And um, I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy. Bye now. So I'm just starting by adding a nice wash. Uh, that's uh, some raw sienna to sort of start getting the color of the bridge in. I like starting with a nice uh, drawing so I know exactly where I want to be and I don't have to adhere to it. I just use it as a guide of where I want to uh, be adding my color. Now that what I added, um, I'm just doing the scrambling the uh, scumbling the background there in the, my uh, um, Daniel Smith undersea green. I added that violet though just to add shadows. to the bridge and I'm going in and sort of indicating trees in the background. Oh, look at that color just spreading that way. I love undersea. It breaks into beautiful yellows and light greens. And that's some of my uh, yellow green, green gold, I think it is, just to make it feel really vibrant and as if the sun is popping through it. I'm Italian. I speak with my hands, so you're going to see a lot of that going on. That's under the bridge, a little bit more of my undersea. Beautiful color. Oh, and now I just added Cascade. The Cascade is a cooler green. It breaks into turquoise. Now, you might see some of that going into my bridge, and some of you might feel as if that is a terrible thing. It's a painting. It's a watercolor. I don't mind that one little bit. It's nice to see those things happening in the moment. Um, I do tilt my paper a lot. I use my two magic ingredients, which are water and gravity to help me move my paints. I want that effect of that color just just cascading right down into the water. And as you could see, by tilting the paper and letting the water and the paint run, it's giving me those beautiful water reflections. And I don't have to fuss over them. I would much rather see that paint doing the work for me and the water and the gravity all take an effect for me. So I'm just moving my brush around. That's a little finger painting there. A um, little lifting going on just to control a little bit of the color. Building the ripples there on that left side. When I go in and add more color, I'm charging the area. It's what I call charging the area. And then I know that I'm going to be losing some of that color into the water as it tumbles down, as it just folds right down. And what a beautiful way to, to do water is with water and paints and letting them be exactly what they are. I think sometimes we feel we need to do all these little minor details and I, I really would rather start with nice big washes. You know, first off, when you start with a nice big wash, as we're doing here, it gets rid of a lot of the white paper, which I think looks rather intimidating. Now, I switched brushes. That's probably like a number four. And I'm working in that area because it's dry, and I'm letting the rest of it um, the rest of the paint dry so that I, uh, I'm not disturbing it or overworking it. 
It's another reason why people get mud is because they feel they need to continue to work in an area till they get exactly what they want. Well, we can go back in. The people really are showing a little bit of the, um, you know, the proportion of the bridge. It's showing exactly how small they are on the further side and how close they are and larger on the other side and not really going very crazy with the people. It's really more about the shapes of the people, heads, bodies, arms. That's my raw sienna. That area is dry now. If I stopped right now, you would know it's a bridge. I think that's important to notice is that how much do you have to tell your viewer? How much do you want to tell your viewer? Or how much do you want to not say? Now, obviously, I love the details, as I'm sure all of you also love the details. And um, I like to tell a story with the details and with all those fine, beautiful architectural pieces that these this bridge happens to have. And most of, you know, when we go in to see architecture, it's really um, such a beautiful way to depict it. But I, I also don't want to get super fussy with it. You know, I do want it to be art, artsy, painterly, and um, not over fuss the details. We can always go back in later and do those. It's some of the scroll work on the bottom of the uh, bridge. And that's, uh, you know, just giving that urn a little bit more color. That's looks like a reddish violet I'm using there, which is nice. I like using violets for shadows. To me, shadows aren't, um, they're, they're not brown or gray. I feel color temperature. That's something that I talk a lot about is the temperature of where we're at in terms of the painting itself. So if we're in a shadow area, it feels cool. And so I'll use a cooler color to depict that shadow as opposed to running for my, my um, well, I don't have black or gray. So yeah, adding those nice circular architectural spots on the uh the bridge it's an it's a beautiful bridge in central park we did um i took this picture on a workshop that i was doing there in may it was a little chilly but um i knew i wanted to take it back to the class and paint it so i'm really happy that i'm actually able to get this all on on recorded for you and telling you everything that I did. I'm using a uh, raw sienna and my reddish violet to sort of get those nice architectural pieces there. And if you take a second, you could see as the rest of the, uh, painting is drying the trees in the background look at the blossoms that happened um, the edge of the uh, underneath the bridge the edge where the water and the uh, the landscape hit how that just trickled down and created beautiful ripples I think sometimes we just try to overwork it too much or too early on and we feel that we need to finish an area before we move on to another area. And I really never feel that way. I like to get um, my details in much later and uh, build it on top of my, my nice uh, big washes. Because you'll remember we started with that golden wash and the violet wash, which gives you the feeling of the sun sort of hitting the bridge and shadows hitting the bridge from the trees and the light coming through.
pay attention to what size brush you're using for a particular area. I'll run between, that's like a number 10. Uh, for the finer details, I might go to a, a four or something like that. Um, that is reverse definition. What I'm doing there is there's the other side of the bridge. And now that that top area is dry, I'm able to go in and add more foliage and will suggest that other, the, the, the back side of the bridge. Some limbs. You'll occasionally see one of my students pointing to something and I'll chuckle with them and say, you're now in my video. So if you see that happening, it just means one of my zealous students just had to point something out or ask me a question about something. That area is dry. So now I'm going back in with my, oh, my indigo. I'm sure that's what it is. Um, I use indigo as a way to really get some nice dark darks. I don't go for Payne's gray. I don't use black ever. I love using uh, that uh, Mamari blue indigo. Probably hard to get now. Um, Mamari has changed hands and oh, they're not as readily available. But you might be able to find them. If you do, I highly recommend them. They they have a way of moving in the water that's just extraordinary. Um, I, I, I haven't found other painting, uh, other uh, paints manufacturers that move quite that well. It has something to do with, I don't know, the mediums that um, get, that they're using in within the, the pigments. I think it's honey. I always find that uh, flies like to come around my Mamari paints. I'm probably using my sexy scumble brush there and it's giving me some nice uh, rough edges and nice tips. And it's the, um, I did a, a, a YouTube video of that. Look for the sexy scumble brush on uh, YouTube and I'll show you how to take a sable brush that you're probably not using much because after a while they just don't really do well. Um, they don't hold their shape. They really are in not good shape the 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 tips aren't don't have a really nice point on them and I always look for a nice point on my um on my brushes uh so I did a video on how to make your how to make uh, your sable brush that you're probably not using much anymore and how to turn it into one of your favorite brushes and you get those great landscape effects at, without a whole lot of fuss and I just wanted to point out, you saw how I added some violet, some reddish violet to that, the greens there. Some trickling down foliage coming into the reflection in the water. I'd like to move around the painting too because I'm waiting for certain areas to dry and I don't want to overwork them. And it gives me an opportunity to focus on other areas that I want to give more attention to. So I'm always thinking about where I'm going to be um, painting. I don't want to add too much um, water or uh, too much um, uh, overwork a wet area because then that's when another way in which you might get an overworked painting or mud. So I'm cautious about that. And we're coming down to the wire here. It's starting to take shape, a little more architectural uh, details to it. That's my raw sienna. The nice shapes underneath. Laying the paint down and letting it move into the water. Oh, a little bit of sunlight hitting through. Some details, architectural details there with a little brush. That's like a little number three or four. 
I don't use them too often because I find if, I, if that's the brush I have in my hand, I'm working too small. So pay attention to what size brush, pick up the right brush for the right job. And I always have my brushes, at least three or four brushes off to my right. And uh, I pick them up and change them really often. And one of the things that we're doing is, of course, our blue, our, our violet um, and our yellow complementary colors. But notice, while they do tone each other down, we're not getting mud. So adding some finishing touches. I thank you for visiting. I love your feedback. Come and visit again. Bye now.